So just to give you an idea, this is a typical public blockchain ledger. So you have an alphanumeric string, also known as a wallet address, um, the uh, crypto equivalent of a, a bank account number, for example, and then you have some metadata, but not very uh, informative. And what we do at Chainalysis really is to help de-anonymize this information. We're helping you connect what's happening on the blockchain with real-world services to understand who you're interacting with. So just to give you an idea of how powerful this can be in the real world, so OFAC have recently started to um, actually uh, place uh, wallet addresses onto the sanctioned designation lists. And so they, um, they actually sanctioned Hydra Marketplace, which is a darknet marketplace, a web service where you can uh, basically purchase illegal goods. So we're talking guns, drugs, in some circumstances, uh, you know, contract killers, that kind of stuff, really bad stuff. So they were, they were sanctioned, and they actually provided 117 wallet addresses on the sanctioned designation for Hydra Marketplace. Now, we took those 117 addresses, and we were able to use our heuristics and our analytics to actually identify 6.6 .6 million wallet addresses. Now what does it look like at the point of transaction? So if we take all that information and we apply it to, to a transaction, this is in the scenario of a fiat transaction. So we see here uh, USD moving from a counterparty to a customer. So now if we sort of take the same scenario of an inbound transaction, if my clicker will cooperate, and we uh, apply this to the world of crypto, the eagle eyed among you will have noticed two new boxes appear at the bottom there, which are counterparty risk and counterparty activity. When we receive a transaction from a counterparty, we can be alerted to that address being associated to some kind of risk. And we will call that, uh, at least in my team, we call it direct exposure. So we have direct exposure to a risk coming in. We also have counterparty activity. And this was the real eye opener for me, moving from the fiat space to the crypto space, especially as an investigator. I can go into the counterparty's wallet and see all the transactions that they ever conducted since that wallet became active, and all the transactions after the point at which they send me a transaction, I can go in and, and, and see what they've been up to. Um, that's almost in the fiat space like having access to the bank statement of the person who's sending your customer money. But it doesn't stop at the direct exposure uh, that we have to these entities and, and, and their sort of risk profile. We also have something which is called indirect exposure. So as we can see here, uh, bad guys have appeared on screen. Um, I'm not very creative. I have to get better at my names. But bad guys have been clustered and linked to terrorist financing by a blockchain analytics tool. We can now see that those funds have gone into a counterparty who has in turn sent those funds to us. Having this visibility, which you wouldn't have in the fiat space, you would only see the counterparty themselves, um, allows us to get a much, more, uh, a much richer intelligence picture and, and sort of risk picture of, of the transactions that we're processing.